what is up guys I'm back here with another video and today I'm actually going to be talking some trash about an educational program known as great learning which was created by the McCollum School of Business at University of Texas Austin uh, a little bit about why I know about why this program sucks is because I've tutored somebody who did it and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why this program is particularly bad and then I'm going to talk about what's wrong with a lot of these data science programs in general and lastly I'm going to even talk about why data science is a dying role and I don't really think you should be getting into it if in my honest opinion so the first thing about reason why great learning is bad is that it's overly technical uh, and so basically with the students in that cohort that my student was in which is just like the class the group of students 65 percent of them already were working technical roles like it software engineer in software engineering um, and they were able to do fine a lot of them got jobs as data analysts and whatnot um, and were able to successfully land a role, but that was more based on the skills that they already had. The other students that did not have a technical background, these are people that were, a lot of them were teachers, uh, stay-at-home wives, and my student who was an insurance claims specialist. Uh, and of these tw 20 people, uh, with the exception of my student, 10 of them, half of them dropped out, and half of them barely passed but did not retain or learn any of the skills and that were taught and were by no means considered employable and nowhere even close to getting a job literally no closer to landing a job than they were before the program uh, and they were going back to whatever they were doing beforehand which is just depressing in my opinion um, my student is the only one that's kind of in between as she's actually learned a good bit but it's still not really ready for a job. And, um, but anyway, uh, that, is the f that is one major thing wrong with it. Another thing is that the curriculum was very confusing and they used jargon that threw everyone off. Every single topic that was covered um, is basic, that the curriculum covered, I had to go over with my student in basic, simple layman's terms. At first, I thought this was because she was old as she is a bit of an older working professional. But um, I turned out, it turns out I've seen some of the curriculum and I'm, I can attest that that is not the case uh, and that the program was just using a bunch of jargon that really threw everyone off. My knowledge isn't even that good. I'm not even that smart. And I was still able to teach these, base, these, these concepts. Um, some were relatively complex, but most were basic. I was able to teach these concepts better than the program. It's than, better than this program that cost $6,000. So, secondly, they nitpicked over details that didn't matter, and they neglected what truly mattered. So, there was this quote from Tony Robbins, I think. It's, um, we, I'm probably butchering it, but it's, we, we give, me not only do we give meaning to meaningless things, but we make meaningful things meaningless. Now, this is not quite the same, but, I don't know, I was just throwing that out there. Um, anyway... What I mean by that, so there were little details like, uh, you know, having your markdown, which is basically your comments that explain what your code, is, your, that explain your code, having that in the right font, in the right, like, little format, and all these little formatting things that really don't matter. And they forced very specific answers and questions and tasks that should be more open-ended. Uh, there were a lot of, you know, a lot of times in these projects you'd have to do a data exploration which is basically you look at the data set you look at the kinds of features and attributes that are in there and you think about you know things that like okay if we're working on this project like let's say we're working on an insurance project and let's pretend we're an insurance company what kinds of things would we want to know about this data set given them you know features and attributions attributes we have available um, and then you just kind of brainstorm and it's a bit more of a creative process but they wanted us to have these specific questions and specific answers, and they didn't explain the logic or reasoning behind any of it. Um, third problem, there was very, the curriculum was very overly rigid. They never gave students a chance to pick their own projects, which led to an inability to identify real-world use cases. So all these projects, they were canned, they were picked for you. They have all these little data sets like the Pima Indians data set where you take 
you know, this population of Native Americans from Arizona or near where I live and uh, basically just takes their blood pressure and their body mass and all these attributes about their body and their stuff and then like predicts whether or not they have diabetes and it was just all these projects like that um, that were already canned they're already very basic beginner projects that employers really don't give a shit about and there was pretty much just no room for creativity contrasted with the program i did which is called Flatiron school we would uh and our last project we would actually source our own data we'd come up with our own data set we'd you know go on these websites you know we we do all this hacking shit to get the data and then we would do what we wanted with it um rather than you know just bl- just following some cookie cutter project um then like i said the project rubrics were so specific that it left no room for creativity or critical thinking you had like there were so many projects my fir- the first few projects i had to help her on um i kind of did it my own style and you know i was th- being cr- more creative and all this stuff and it, it got us some bad marks because we got marks um we got points taken off for having you know a not quite following the format or you know having basically having things kind of formatted different and doing things in a slightly different order and just basically just doing it a little bit different from their cookie cutter template and uh it it didn't it it affected her grades negatively so i had to start just basically being a robot and just blindly following along with what was created and i really didn't like seeing myself just thinking like a robot and not using creativity or critical thinking um and it was just like it's just it was just ridiculous because we were getting bombarded with all these projects and i just basically was so bombarded that i was we didn't even have time for me to explain these concepts i was barely tutoring her i was practically just doing her assignments for her and it wasn't until the curriculum ended that we were able to actually sit down and actually go to all these topics that the program failed that the program you know they taught but they failed to explain it properly and uh, she basically spent six thousand dollars to learn all this shit and they didn't even teach it right so i had to sit and help her she had to spend a couple thousand more with me sitting there and helping to have her sit there and help or to sit there and help her um so and it's created a culture of monkey see monkey do rather than learning to learn what i mean by that is since the pro since the curriculums were so rigid and so structured that it ended up being that there were a lot of people that were really confused and they were pretty much just copying off of each other to come up with a project to turn it in and you know i saw the chats and it was really funny because people would be like okay why did you do it this way and like because that's how the professor wants it but no one knew why anything was done no one there no one understood the decision making process behind any of it and it just reminded me of like those days in high school where everyone would be like copying off each other's papers and just hoping that you know the professor doesn't doesn't notice uh, and then the fourth one i mean actually i'm going to contrast that really quick with the program i did where you know we're doing our own things and you know they taught us how to use just go on stack overflow when your code isn't working and you know post some questions and look at some similar people who have solved the issue and just try some stuff and throw some stuff at the wall and see what sticks and just figure it out and everyone was doing that so it was like very encouraging to just like think you know about your problems and just figure the figure the hell out um and this last major disadvantage of this program is kind of controversial and in some ways is actually an advantage depending on how you look at it but the instructors had very heavy act they were indians they had very heavy indian accents and it's funny because my my student is actually from india and uh she's i guess that she's not from she's these these people are from a different part of india than she is and she couldn't even understand them because they're like local dialect was so different from hers that she couldn't even understand it uh which was hilarious to see but it's also kind of eye-opening to realize like 
as an American, we're just like, oh, all these people sound the same, but like they can't even understand each other. So, you know, it's very, it's interesting. Um, but this could also be seen as an advantage because in the real world, you're going to have to work with people from different cultures and ethnicities and uh, nationalities. And quite frankly, you know, if someone has a really thick and heavy Indian accent that you're working with, you can't just like, oh, I don't understand that guy's accent, you know. Um, so anyway, that is why great learning is not a good choice. Now, I'm going to talk about why data science programs in general often suck. The first one is that they never taught SQL, or I don't want to say never, but they, they often seriously neglect SQL. And the reason why this is a problem is because SQL is the language used to work with the, these massive databases that the companies that have all this data have because uh, you have to be able to create the database and store the data in the database properly and access the data when you need it, the right data that you need when you need it, which all requires you to know SQL. And if you don't know SQL, well, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And it is the most important language for landing a job in data, and you can't even land a role working with data if you don't know it hence the fact that i'm not actually hence the fact that i've never actually had a real job in the real world myself um, i'm not i'm not holding anything back i am not a data scientist i have not been hired um, to work as a data scientist the only way i've been able to make money in this industry is by regurgitating the very things that i learned um, and to be honest i feel kind of like a sod having made thousands of dollars teaching people shit that um, isn't even useful and um, basically just regurgitating useless shit that I learned to teach more people useless shit. Um, you know, at first I was satisfied because I was giving people their desired result, but now I, I'm not because I'm just realized that I'm just helping people basically achieve nothing. And I don't like that. Also, uh, the second thing was a major emphasis on modeling. Now, uh, what I mean to say about here is there's all this emphasis on building the machine learning model, testing all these hyperparameters, as they call them, and uh, testing out all these different models. And that's not how it works in the real world. Nobody does all that. The only person that even handles the models is the machine learning engineer. And the model is already known. The model is already set. They've already figured out what model is the best, and there's not a whole lot of thought that goes into that. All that thought and effort goes into adjusting the data and modifying the data such that it is able to, basically modifying the data input such that the output is the best and not worrying about the model. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but. And then the last thing is ultimately this whole data science thing is a dying rule. So let me show you this thing I drew out here real quick. So traditionally how it works is, company has the data they take the data and the data analyst extracts the data as needed and they do reporting that they report back to the business which is like you know all kinds of statistics on the sales or revenue or any kinds of information the business wants to know um, and then they would continue modifying the data and then the machine learning engineer would you know modify the data accordingly and then pass it through this model and then the model would have outputs that would you know affect the, the business and help them make decisions or maybe be part of the end product you know if the business was an app or software um, and then that's how it would go but they tried to get smart and they tried to spend all this money hiring these people with very advanced mathematics skills to basically read a bunch of research papers and do all this other stuff to the data and just do all this pontificating and shit and you know come up with some highly bespoke customized model that uh, took a lot of brain power to make um, and a lot of time invested to to come up with this model but it was ultimately no better than these massive highly productionized models that was already being used um, so basically all that that meant is they're basically spending all this money on these highly academic types uh, basically wasting all this money hiring all these people for six figure salaries to basically do add no value create no value to the business so 
they're kind of figuring out that these people were never necessary to begin with. Uh, so these people will either be pushed into this position or to this position, depending on if they're like communicating with people and learn and being on the business end, or they're more just like, give me a computer. I want to write code. Um, I don't want to talk to anybody. Uh, and if that's you, don't feel like I judged you. I, I don't, I have respect for people like this uh, as well. So um, <laughs> anyway, that is my whole spiel on, you know, why this program sucks and why I quite frankly think data science is not a good field to go into. And I hope nobody was too offended by any of this, but, you know, this is just some truth. This is just my two cents. And I really wanted to just get this message out there. So. Anyway, thanks for listening this far, and I'll see you in the next one.